Alright, let's take the version where we actually return a list of factors instead of returning nothing. Right? So I'm just gonna take this guy. Alright, let's do the iterative version first. Alright, so this is gonna return the list. This means that I should have a list beforehand, right? That empty list, right? And whatever value that found to be a factor, whatever divisor that found to be divisor uh, that can be, uh, can we use n to divide it by, that finds that n is divisible by uh, that i, we need to, instead of printing it, we need to append it into that list. Right, and once we print that list, we should see the same exact values. Right, so how can we change this here? Now it's the same exact thing, not something that if we took this slowly, if I say something like this, instead of return none here, notice something the program should actually let's say that this is version two. Right, so the program should return a list. So basically, there is a return here, that's really important. So there's no return none that is going to be used, right? This, this means two things. One, that the conditional return is not going to be none. And the other thing, it means that there is a permanent return. Right before the recursive function call. Right? So this is the first edit. So if i became less or greater than n, and instead of returning none, I'm just going to return the current list, which is in this case, let's call it um, a list. Right? One would say, where is that list? Mm, that's a good question. Where we can do this like the following. We can say that a list is going to be defined like that and we are going to pass a list to the function. This means that there is another argument that have, had appeared. So we would say that we are taking from the user a list like this. Right? So we're going to return that list. Right? We're going to return that list with the actual state uh, that it has. Right? And instead of printing the i here, the same thing that we did inside the loop, Right? We're going to append that i inside the list. right? And once you finish everything that you're doing, notice that we have changed the definition. So this needs to be reflected in the recursive call. And since we want to, the rest to be returned, then we are going to return um, what is going to be returned finally from each recursive call. And we're going to see this in a minute when we trace, when we trace this on in, in, in our whiteboard. right? And there is a slight issue here. right? So you can tell that uh, the, we used L, right? That L was used in that code, but here we're not using really L. We're using a list, right? There is a still still a problem. So let me figure this out really quickly. Oh yeah, I just figured this out now. We called this figure facts version 2, right? So we needed to change this to into facts version 2 because what does the program is trying to do is that it's trying to call facts, the facts that we have defined earlier that does not have an, a, an, another positional argument or a second positional argument. It's trying to take it and place a list into it, right? And that does not really work. So let's have this like that and let's call version 2 like this. And you should see that these are the values. If you are trying to get the factors for 4, if you're trying to get the factors for, for example, 12, then it's going to get you the same result as the iterative version. So let's take this one by one and see what's going on here. All right. So I'm just going to take this guy and let me just really quickly save this. You know what? I'm just gonna have this as four because this is simpler to work with.
all right and let's just save this as big too and let's go here start a new canvas all right and let's take this guy here all right and now let's see all right I'm gonna use a new a different method here instead of using the call stack it's the same idea it's the same idea of the call stack but the structure is different I'm not gonna use these kind of uh, things right so let's say that this is the first call to fax validity right And let's say that we pass the fax value to the n, which is in this case 4, and the list, let's just call it them, right? And i is the same as well, like that, right? So this is the first version, the first choice of call, this is this one, right? So now we have l that is literally empty, it does not have anything. Right, in the first recursive call, right, up until now, and we have i that is equal to bump, and we have n that is equal to 4. I'm not going to write anything, this is static, and it's not going to be different in, um, it's not going to be different in any of the um, recursive calls, right? This is 4, like this. Okay. So now let's take the first statement. Is i greater than n? Well, it is not, right? So let's take, choose the other one, right? Is n, when you divide it by i, is it divisible? Is i divisible? Well, yeah, this one is divisible. You can divide 4 by 1, and there is no remainder here, right? So this is divisible. So in this case, I want to append into the list i. Right now, i is gonna have the value of one. All right, and we are going to hit a notice that there's an if statement that I skipped, which is the base case where we are going to return the list here or l. And this is the conditional where we are appended i, right? And finally, we have the permanent return where we are going to call facts again, right, with n and the list and i incremented by one right so this is gonna execute a new recursive call so this is recursive call one right so this is gonna call another stack for you right okay so the control was in here at this point but now the control is halted until we finish or until we see what would this actually include or what will this return so now this is basically calling um, facts with n that is equal to 4 and l that has 1 inside of it and i that is equal to 2 right so now a calling facts with 4 and the list has 1 and the i is equal to 2, right? So i is 2, list has only 1, right? And n is 4. So let's see. Is it a case? True? No, it's not true. i is not greater than n. So now let's see. Is n divisible by i? Well, if you um, divide it 4 by 2, then yeah, it's divisible. So let's append into L that I, right? So now L is going to have one and two, right? And finally, let's hit the last line. This is the control flow where we have return fact of four, this is N, and L now is one, two, and finally I is two, or incremented by one, so it's gonna be three. Right, so 
this line, the control floor is going to be halted in this line, right? Like the control floor has halted here. So it can call the other recursive code or the other version like that. All right, let's just do it consecutively. Right, so the control flow is being passed into recursive code 3. And it's trying to execute them to the facts where we are sending these three things here. So facts is going to have n that is 4 and the current list that is being passed, which is 1, 2. Right, and we have i being incremented by 1, so we have i that is equal to 3. So i is basically 3, and the list is basically 1 and 2, like you'll see in a minute that it's going to be appended by another element, but not in this iteration, not in this recursive code. So let's see now, did we hit the condition where i is greater than n? Did we hit the base case? No. 3 is still less than n, which is 4, right? So let's go to the other one. Is n divisible by i? Well, in this case, 4 is not divisible by 3. Right, so there is no append that is going to happen here. Right, so let's go to the recursive call fact. Right, where n is 4 and i is the same 1 and 2, we didn't change it, and we're passing i plus 1 to the next recursive call, which is in this case 4. Right, so another call will happen. This is remember, this is n and this is the list and this is the i right so this is going to trigger a new function call so the control flow is going to be halted here till this actually has a value till this function call is substituted with an actual value right so this is going to go and call recursive call 4 right where we are passing these values to that recursive call, right? So we have facts now that has n, which is in this case 4, and we have the list of 1 and 2, and we have 4, which is i in this case, right? So i is 4. Now, did we hit the base case? Now, this is l, just for your information, all right? Did we hit the base case? If i is greater than n well we didn't so nothing is going to happen right so now is n divisible by i well yes it is right 4 is divisible by what do we say that i is equal i is equal to 4 here right so far uh, 4 is divisible by 4 right so we are going to append the value of i, which is 4 in this case, into uh, l, right? So l is going to have 4 as a new member. Let's go to the last return where we are calling fact with 4 and l that is equal to 1, 2, and 4, right? And we are calling i with a plus 1, which is 5 in this case, right? So the control is going to be halted in that recursive call, right, until we find a value that fits, let me just use a different color, until we find a value that can be placed in a state of this function call. So this is going to pass the control flow into recursive call 5, right? So we're going to have recursive call 5 where facts is going to have value of n of 4 and we have 1, 2, and 4 inside the list and we have i that is equal to 5 all right so i here is 5 and n here is 4 did we hit the base case where i is greater than n well yes we did so in this case return the current state of the list just return the list as it is just return the list as it is that's it right so in this case we are going to execute this line. So if this return, if any return executed, none of the lines afterwards are going to be executed. And hence, this is going to return... This is going to return what? This is going to return the list that has 1 and 2 and 4. 
right, in place of that recursive call. So all of this is going to be substituted by list which is 1 and 2 and 4, right? And the control flow is now, this is going to be pop, the control flow is back now to this function or to this recursive call. So we are going to complete the returning statement and all of this, right, all of this is going to return the same list. So when this is returning the same list, we are going back to that previous. When this is returning that list, then we are going back with 1, 2, 4 to the previous recursive call, right, to that function. Right, so the control flow is back to this function, to this recursive call, and this is popped of the stack. And this highlighted function call is going to place with whatever has been returned, which is in this case 1, 2, and 4. Right? And now the interpreter can continue and execute that return statement to pop up this recursive call from the stack. And now the return here is going to have one two and four right and now the oh my god the control flow is back to this recursive call and all of this highlighted call is going to be taken away of course this is popped as we said this is going to be having the return list which is one two and four like that and now the control flow is back to this line and this return statement will execute to pop this recursive call from the stack returning finally that list like that to this function call right so the control flow is returned to this place and this is popped and now the interpreter is gonna replace this unknown value of the recursive function the recursive call with this list and now the control flow is going to execute the actual print statement popping all of this from the stack and returning What color should I pick? And returning um, the actual return with 1, 2, and 4 instead of this um, place right there, right? So this is going to have 1, 2, 4 instead of this function call right there. All right? I hope this is clear to you. You can you could have done the same uh, exact structure that we have done did before using the call stack, but it's the same thing. I just wanted to show you something different. That's it. One last note that I want to mention for the factors program is that you do not need to pass a positional argument to pass an empty list as a positional argument. You can have it as well as an um, an optional argument that gets initialized only one time, only one time when this function is being passed. And this is done via this line here, right? So I'm just initializing this list. Just let me just uh, change the name of the function first. Okay, and now I'm initializing that list internally instead of depending on the user to send an into list like that, like this, like this uh, right there. And this is being initialized only once, only once when this in the first recursive call when this function is being called for the first time from this line. Right. So now uh, everything is going to be staying the same. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to initialize this for the first time. And every time a recursive call happens, it's going to take the empty list that's being uh, modified along uh, the path of the recursive calls. Right.